Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in for another live stream at the Rookies on a Friday. I'm sure, I hope you're all having a very wonderful and safe Friday and um, looking forward to the weekend. So uh, today I decided we're just going to pull from the Discord channel. We're just going to go over some of the stuff that um, we guys posted for me to check out and review and just kind of run through that. I mean, honestly, looking at the stuff so far, it's really, really great and it's really high quality, like just art overall, which is super impressive and every time i see the work coming through the portfolio stuff like it's just it just gets better and better if it's not on like the quality front it's just that i'm hitting like the kind of technical aspects and sort of like really kind of almost one-to-one -one kind of what they with what they would expect in the studio so the first one we got here is from liam wright it's the anno 1800 inspired ship so i can see from this it's, it's very much like a third person kind of mesh you know, you wouldn't be super close to this guy, you, like you wouldn't really be operating it. But even from that angle, like it holds up pretty well, which is awesome. So I can kind of picture it being like from here, you know, you're kind of just constantly seeing it on player camera from like this kind of direction. Um, you know, I think one of the things that a few things kind of stand out is like, you know, I can see that he optimizes pretty well where like, you know, it's okay to go in and delete like faces and stuff that aren't visible to the camera because it just, there's no point having it if the player's not going to be able to see it. And, you know, obviously, one other thing to always keep in mind is, like, if you're doing this kind of rope stuff, um, you know, because it's so small on screen, if you were to have this as, like, cylindrical meshes, it would, like, really kind of add up on the trice count. And it's not really worth it when you're kind of, like, looking at something from, like, this angle because you're not going to be ever close enough to really see it. You know, and when you think of Ellison as well, like the further you get from an object and the smaller the pixels get, the more kind of shimmery it starts to appear on screen. So what you can really do to kind of help combat that is, as, this, as Liam has here, you know, you can create these guys as just basically like, it's just a texture down on a flat card. Um, and he's just basically tiled it along these sections. And I think this is impressive and it's a really good technique, but I would go a little further if it was me and I would also kind of just add a little more blur to the edge where when you start to pull back, when the pixels get smaller, you don't end up with this kind of like just shimmering. So there's something to keep in mind. You know, we can check out his Atlas texture. We can see it's laid out pretty efficiently, which is great. You know, you got like your tiling rope texture that we have, we can see up in this guy up here. You know, you have all these like details up here at the metal. And you can see that he's really utilized this in such a good way around the mesh where he's just unwrapped this, you know, to get to that kind of like metal and um, just tiling, which looks really, really nice. And it really holds up as well. Cause when you look at this direction, you can see that there's a lot of roughness change and value to it, which is really nice. You know, and as I always say, your textures are always the most expensive part of a mesh. You know, you can always optimize the geometry and LEDs, but your texture, if that, if your texture is a 4K or a 2K, it's, you know, you're probably, it's going to be a lot harder to really pull that down unless you like are switching textures or to a new material for your LOD meshes. But even that it accumulates an additional draw call. So yeah, this is awesome. You know, and you can see just here, we got a wee bit of like, this detail happening here. I'm not sure maybe if it's to do with um, just the kind of maybe the opacity. But overall, this is really great. I'd say for like, it's cool that you literally have these guys and you just have like different variants of material and detail, you know, same here as well. But I'd probably go even as far as to kind of like, change it a wee bit more you know like if you can kind of push it just because it as much as it, there is a visible difference it's also very similar in some ways so maybe you know you could have like took this section maybe painted it instead so maybe there's like you know you have like this bottom bit and, but then maybe there's like another section up top where it's kind of just another colored like another painted red to kind of just kind of accent with the bottom which would look really cool because, I mean, you can definitely see you've done it here, you know. So maybe, like, these guys here could be, like, you know, you, you have it here. You have it down on the base here. And then maybe up on these guys here on this part, just have these, like, a red. So it's just kind of, it, like, the accent color is, like, super strong, you know. Like, if you're looking at a ship from, like, this direction, you can kind of identify 
you know, like, oh, that's a ship belonging to X, Y, or Z. Um, you know, and you can kind of see it here as well. Like, there's a lot of just a lot of repeating detail, but I mean, overall, it's I mean, the layout is really nice. You know, it's a really good approach, and especially like the bolts here as well. You got like just all like the different kind of you know wear and tear on the top that you can kind of just replicate around the mesh. And then you got like this nice kind of like wooden handrail, the metal part. I'm just let me see where's that the mesh. I just want to see if that's okay. So that's fully alpha. Yeah, that's awesome. So it's just basically a card with that detail on it. And I mean, if I wasn't to look at the wireframe, I probably wouldn't have had any idea that that's how that's set up, unless I was looking super close. So it's really kind of a way to kind of get away with just like replicating these details without adding the additional geometry, because at a distance you're not going to be able to be close enough to kind of see that like, oh, this is like geometry or it is an alpha card. You know, you could probably like for this guy here, you could probably t tile this section like the way it's tiled here. So. If this, for example, is like a plane per section, you could probably just like, for example, oh, okay, scratch that. He'd done it how I would have done it, where you just add like a card and just basically have these set up. So you're paying only for like two faces here instead of like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And just those little kind of little things like that just really help to optimize the mesh as well. You know, and you can see it's on here with the cards. Um, I mean, yeah, this is awesome. It's super solid. You know, your abido reads really nice. You follow this nice kind of just wear and tear and grind around the bottom. The reflectivity is awesome. Your gloss, so you're using spec PBR, spec gloss, PBR workflow for this. Your normals. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, when you're doing something like this, you, you wouldn't really have to worry about adding like chamfers and stuff to the edges because you're not going to see it. So keeping this just like simple box geo and then just you being that to your um, sheet will be enough to really kind of make a pop. But overall, yeah, th this is awesome. Like really, this is solid, really great work. And I think anyone who is looking at this will be impressed. I think the only thing that stands out here is I'd probably get rid of like this. I know it's probably to do with the alpha, but whatever way you've set the alpha texture, you probably need kind of this like white background. So you have like the black on top. But if you maybe it might be a good idea to have the alpha set up with that where it's black and white, but then in your texture, just kind of dilate, dilate it in these areas so like there's no whites. Because I find sometimes what happens is the further an object gets from screen, the uh, UV start to compress. And that means that if you have any white space around this, it's going to start kind of showing through on your UVs um, on the mesh itself. Now, I mean, you're probably not going to see it here, no. But just definitely something to note is just when it comes to your textures, everything minus the alpha texture should have dilation. Um, that'll be your roughness, your matteness, and your um, albedo. I mean, your, norm, your normal map basically has it in form of padding. Um, so it's kind of effectively another form of padding, but for like the other texture files. And you can see that you've packed your roughness metallic in AO map, which is again awesome because that's what studios typically require. Like this asset would be 100% for Unreal 4. So yeah, well done. This is awesome. And let's check out the Soviet TV or surveillance. Yeah, this is cool. Wow, yeah, I like all these details. Like it's really, really nice. You've got your texture sheet. Okay. Hard punch, TV base, so you have two texture sheets for this guy. So you got your TV and you got your hard punch. Okay. So there is some stylization to this, which is really nice. Like the the paint and kind of just the shape of it, it's just it's quite stylized, but it also has kind of just a very realistic sort of touch to it as well as all like these micro details and like the roughness and stuff. And it's really well made. And uh, let's check out your wireframe. Yeah, this is awesome. And I'm assuming these are basically the same texture, just mirrored, same as these guys here. Um, one thing I would always say like from experience and one thing that took me a while to realize is if you're dealing with kind of like if you're dealing with an object that's symmetrical and it allows you the opportunity to, 
I mean, I'm not sure what way the EVs lay out here, but from what I can see, there's no real like visibility. But what you could do is if you have like a section of a mesh where you know on the left side of it and the right side, it's the same, but you know that the roughness and stuff is different. What you could do is you could mirror it. If there's nothing to be shown on this screen and it's just sitting there as an asset, you could go in and mirror this section here and just flip it over in the UVs. But the only thing I would say is if you're doing that, just be careful because what will happen is any detail that is on the edge of your UVs in the center is going to mirror on the left side as well. So you end up like this butterfly effect. So for me, if I ever do mirroring, I mean, you could probably honestly, if you really wanted to be cheeky about it, you could probably honestly crunch this down into like, you know, add an edge loop, like across here as you have and across here. Even if you keep this section as just a, like planar unwrapped, you could literally just mirror a quarter of the TB and just flip it, flip it, flip it. So you're only paying literally for like the space in the EVs rather than the whole section. Um, but again, you know, the only thing with that is just to make sure that any detail that is along the edge, it's probably going to translate across all sections, which means you'll end up with kind of just this visible marine and butterfly effect. So what I always do is when I'm doing stuff like that or I add those kind of detail, I'd always just make sure not to put any or too much roughness info in like the center points or like the edge, but just kind of keep it in the center in such a way where it's not, you're not getting kind of like this roughness detail here and down here and then across, you know, so it just, just a little tip. And then you could probably do the same here. Like, I mean, I'm assuming these guys here, you probably have just unwrapped and baked one of these guys and you just literally duplicated it around. So you're not like just, you know, it's not four unique UVs. And you know, same for these guys here, you could probably just put that in a tileable See, yep, yeah, exactly. So you could just tile it. Although for me, what I would do if I was ever doing tiling things, I would try and just tile it right across. Um, um it just allows you to kind of like adjust if you need to a lot easier. So if like if this guy was a lot longer, you know that okay, I don't have to like double the edge loops up or like kind of you know, like if the edge loop for the section is like here, you don't have to like cut it here and then like paste it on top of this section, you know, you can kind of just literally pull it right across um, just so it's tight because it's tiling, you know, so what you could have do, what you could have done is like, you could have moved like this guy over here, you know, pack these under here and just around it and just had this going across and um, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. Probably the same with the TV section as well. Um, what I probably would have done if I was doing the base of the TV, because you can see it's very much the same pattern all around. Nothing really changes, except at the very least, you might get some AO info around this bottom base section, you know, maybe behind this note. But even at that, you know, you can just let the engine do that. So generate SSAO around those areas. So what you could do is if you really wanted to optimize this further, let's say if, if your budget was like a 1K or 2K texture sheet and you know you need to crank out like a high detail TV, um, you could go in and just literally symmetrically just UV, like you could do, do it two ways. You could UV half of this like exterior base section and just flip the mesh over, weld it and bake it so you don't get any seams. And then you're basically just paying for like a single UV section. So for example, if we go down to this, you could probably get away with it just being this part here instead of being like all of this. Because typically what you want to do is like, if you have an asset where the, UV, the UVs are laid out, laid out uniquely or in the entire mesh, you want to use utilize that because you want to either add um, unique details to it or maybe some like stickers and stuff, you know? so. Because what this allows is, for example, you could have this note here, but then you could probably go in and add a bunch of stickers on the top and the right, and maybe a little on the left, because you have all those UVs as unique UVs. And um, obviously, if you had this like cut in the center and mirrored, if you were to put stickers here, they would be basically flipped inverted on this section. And so usually, you know, they always say like if you're if you have an object and you know that like this is basically not going to have much detail on the base except maybe like these stains where someone's maybe had a cup or a glass on top of it 
you could just mirror this section with this section on the UVs and just keep this section unique to add those details. That basically allows you to free your UV space and scale your UVs up, which means you actually increase the resolution of your UVs without having to actually increase the texture resolution of it. So it's just something to keep in mind. You know, and the same here as well, you know, like this intersection, you could probably literally give this section here its own UV and then just mirror it down, 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 down. So you're only paying for one UV island for all of these extruded pieces rather than them each having their own unique islands. Number one, this allows you to save on texture resolution. And number two, it allows you to ultimately um, text texture a lot faster. So when you're texturing here, you're basically texturing all of them. So it just really speeds up that's for that you for that, sorry, that for you as well. Um, you know, just EV one of these guys, dupe it over. And that's cool. So and the same here on this side. So you could probably like if we look at the texture sheet, we can see that there's separate UVs for the side of this guy. But really what you could do is just have the one and just mirror it over. So for example, this guy here could be UVs. And you're just basically flipping it over. And you know, because you have to think a player is never going to see both sides of this mesh at once. Like that never will happen. So if you literally do one side, you can take for granted that the player is not going to get to the other side of it and be like, oh, that looks the same. Just something to keep in mind. You know, and I can see is this is this a card? No, it's geometry. Okay. So you can see that your EVs are a little distorted and stretched around here. So I'll probably just fix that part. Um, top section, you have basically just mirrored it down to the bottom. So it's effectively like what you've done here because you basically have this. So you basically went and just, okay, I have the top. And I'm going to just shell that. And I'm going to mirror the EVs for the top to the bottom. And then I'm just going to have these guys. So that's kind of the same idea when it comes to like mirroring these sections. But overall, like this is definitely a really good asset. You know, you're definitely on the right track for sure. And I just feel with a lot of those little details and kind of thing, taking all of that little kind of stuff into consideration, it'll really kind of just propel your work. And not only that, but your knowledge. You know, you'll find that like you'll find that people will very much um, just kind of like studios will appreciate this stuff because. Even if they're hiring you as a junior, they know that they don't actually have to really teach you it because you're already aware of it. You know, it's the same as I always say to students when it comes to LODs or collusion. Like, if you know how to do that stuff, you're way ahead than other students applying who don't know. Because it's extremely important. I mean, when it comes to game art, it has to look pretty, but it also has to be very performant, especially if you're dealing with a game that's like open world. But otherwise, yeah, this looks great. And I, I kind of, I just love like the stylized kind of flair to it, but it also just has like the realistic elements, which look really, really nice. I just want to check out—is that like, where's the EVs for that guy? This guy here. Um, doo, 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 here. Okay. Yeah. So you have done that. So you basically just give a one island with this detail and just mirrored it right here. So that, awesome. Okay. Next, second year, and this is all. Third year uni work, like this is awesome for university. Nice, this is really cool. I mean, this being second year uni work, I mean, it just it shows your passion and commitment for what you do and your determination to get into the industry. Like it definitely shows shines through. Okay, that's cool. So you got this details in alpha, and you're just basically mapping that around. I'm assuming this here is basically well, are they all the same? No. Okay. Huh. So I'm assuming you have two of these guys, and you're just kind of like flipping them around and just mirroring them around here, and then the same with this here as well. Again, a very smart way to approach it. You know, like well, I remember when I started as a junior, I would like take this top section and just basically UV it all, and not realize that you can actually just like UV this and then just like replicate it around it to save on space. So, I mean, the fact that you have knowledge of this stuff is really, really good. What's your geometry like?
Okay. So I think one thing to remember is any anywhere that you have like a center edge loop, like in a mesh like this or any other kind of areas, that gives you an opportunity to kind of get away with mirroring. So if you've like a, if you've a wire frame here or like an edge loop sorry here, you could probably like delete this section and just mirror it over. You know, considering the player is never going to be able to like get down enough to actually notice that detail. So just just those little kind of things really help. But yeah, otherwise, great work. I mean, like this is definitely. I think the quality just needs to be pumped up just a wee bit more. I mean, it, of course, it depends on kind of what you know style you're going for. Like, I mean, because I'm seeing. I'm seeing super realistic stuff, but I'm also seeing it, it's quite stylized, which is which is really cool. It's like it's some kind of a unique um, art style, you know. I mean, yeah, like this is awesome. It's like super cute, but it also just has some really nice details on it. Yeah, this is so nice. Uh, let's see. Dun, dun. Okay, smart. So we can see we can see that you did that for this section. You just basically flip the UVs over and baked it down. Obviously, like there's just slight artifacting going on here in the normal. And same here, you can see you've done that again, which is really good. It's really good that you have that mindset when you're creating assets like this, where you can basically just create half of it, UV it, flip it over, while it all bake it. And then you know that when you're texting here, it's going to show up here. But, uh huh, you have done that. So, an example of like the butterfly effect is kind of like this guy here, like this roughness detail, where you can kind of see like, you know, anything that's like close to the edge is going to replicate over here. And I mean, from this point of view, it's not really going to matter because like, no one's going to really notice, you know, like no one's going to notice that detail enough to be like, oh, it's, it's Murray. You know, like, not even from that angle either. Like, but yeah, that's awesome. I'm really happy to see that. I'm really happy to see that you're doing that. I'd say one thing you could do with the texture coloration on this is just kind of like add a little bit of hue change and like just lightness in the center points where maybe there's just general aging of the paint on the helicopter. And, you know, just kind of like this, like you have it here in your roughness or also in your albedo. Is that your albedo? Yeah, so kind of like this guy here, you have some dirt, but maybe just like, you know, if you can, maybe just push a little bit of discoloration in around the center points. Because I know because it's so small, it can get super noisy as well. But no, that's great, Liam. Seriously, that's, that's like awesome, such awesome work. And the same as this guy here, you got a really nice screwdriver asset. Battery, and screw. Yeah, honestly, like this is very impressive for the amount of time you've been doing 3D. I'd say again, the only thing is maybe like I'd say your, your just your texture work just needs a little bit more push, just a wee bit more roughness push and and pop, and I think it will be really good. Like everything else is solid. Like you technically have everything down that you need to understand and know, but just. I think your materials could just do with a wee bit more love and care. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, let's just check this guy out. Oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah, definitely keep at it, Liam. You're on the right track, and uh, your, your stuff is looking really good. I'm excited to see where it goes. And again, if you have anything else you want me to kind of check out in the next stream, let me know. Okay, next we are on to Gateway to a Wonderland. Cool, so you've created tree rocks, bush twigs, scatter five. Grass rocks made, scatter five on. And this is done in. It doesn't say. Blender. Is it Blender? Yeah, it looks like Blender. Oh wow, that's really cool. So it's like composition work as well, so you're kind of comp 
putting composition in with like VFX and geometry. Yeah, that's really impressive. That looks really cool. I feel maybe one cool idea would be like, you know, you can see this is like a forestry end and you have like this kind of like snowy kind of, it's almost like a, a bubble that contains like a different kind of world, you know, you kind of step through. Um, I'd probably pull this back a wee bit more because I feel like it's just a bit too small considering that this takes up a lot of screen space. And I'd probably add some glow to the outside of it just kind of so it's just kind of shows to viewer that hey this is like kind of like a little teleportation thing you can go through but yeah that's awesome that's really cool really really cool thought okay next we have Roy Bennett awesome I've seen Roy's work before it's really cool wow four months during my advanced term I think I'm trying to center nice the original concept of the scene was created by Dennis John and these are all custom assets that is so cool. So four months. So so four months of work. <laughs> I love the wee Spider Man. That's awesome. The bear. The Spider Man stuff. That's really cool. Roy, honestly, this, this is really cool. Oh, I see the real time camera of it. Yeah, this is solid. Like these assets are super solid. I'd say maybe the only thing that kind of stands out to me is I can see that there's a lot of like sharp edges with this stuff. Like I know when you're creating this stuff into this kind of quantity, you can't really like high poly, low poly everything. But the one thing I would say is um, if you've not utilized the mid poly workflow, I would try and shoot for that as well where, you know, like any objects that have like super sharp edges, you can go in and kind of just like chamfer those edges out and then use like a face with a normal script and like 3ds Max or Maya to just like kind of like smooth them out. So obviously it's additional geometry, but the thing is it allows you to kind of like mimic the high poly bake kind of look to it. And I mean, a lot of studios, like when you look like studios like Ubisoft and like Rockstar and stuff, a lot of them utilize this workflow because you know, you think about it, you have a game with this many amount of assets in it, like it, to create all these from high to low poly bakes, which just take forever. Sorry. So what I would probably do is just, you know, anything that you can kind of get away with that uses like a tiling material. So like this um, coffee table, you know, the shelving unit. Yeah, exactly. Star Citizen style. You know, like this, um, where is it? Yeah, so this guy here, like you could have like this tileable material detail with like kind of plastic on it, and you just sort of model it out, do your mid poly, and just like add that detail in. Um, you know, you could probably get away with it for a lot of the objects here. You know, there's obviously like some of them you'll have to keep unique, you know, but for like the shelving unit, you could do it where so it just means when the player gets close, like the wait a normal, yeah, that that's correct. Um so when the player gets close, it's like the edges aren't super sharp, you know. I mean, you have either two options where if you really have to be kind of strict on your optimization, you could go in and just basically create like a um, trim sheet of like, you know, so maybe, you know, maybe this guy, maybe this guy here and this guy here, you know, you're like, okay, well, I can't afford to be spending titles on this guy and then another bunch of tileables in this guy so maybe you can create like a trim sheet where you can have like the bottom section wood the top section metal and then you have enough detail on the edges so you give it like those like soft edge bakes so then when you mirror simple geometry to it it kind of like mimics that normal map bake because effectively it's using the normal um yeah of course i mean especially when it's a personal project as well roy like and time constraints as we all know you know you could spend six months on something but you know sometimes it's like you're also trying to land a job and you probably don't have six months you know so i totally get it but i mean you can definitely show that there's been so much thought and hard work put into this i mean like just yeah wow like it's it's crazy like it's just so so good I'll check out this YouTube video as well. Oh nice, we spider. That's so awesome. And one thing I really love about this scene is like there's so much storytelling in it. 
it's like it feels like someone's apartment that's lived in and you, you have like all these little subtle details and it kind of you know you have a guy who's just like a big spider-man fan and he's like all these like books and stuff and like maybe he's like a photographer and um you know he just maybe he maybe he's a book writer you know so he has like the writing good villains yeah, i think tank that's cool petflix um yeah this is awesome Roy. And it just it feels like i mean when i think of it when i see this stuff i think of all i always think of like gta or like the division or even like spider-man you know like it, it just gives me kind of um that kind of vibe i don't know this is awesome like yeah like super impressed and even like the lighting at night as well you have the emissive setup for this guy even this is here you know, like that's so cool. You know, the light in the back of the laptop, and then you got this exterior going as well. Like that's that's so cool. I mean, I'm assuming that this is basically just a window mesh, and you have a bunch of like boxes outside with like UV kind of detail of like like um, skyscraper exteriors, which is really neat. So yeah, a lot of this works. It's just fantastic. Cool. That is definitely a, a high, a top tier um portfolio uh page for jobs and it's very cool here that you have your breakdown i mean that's a lot of assets as well wow you got your decals yeah that's cool that's it's also a very smart way is to use decal work because it basically means that you can speed up the process so if anything and then your anything in your world is static, you know, you could probably shoot for like a mid-poly workflow approach to your scene. So all these guys here, like these switches and stuff, could all be mid-poly, but you lean on your decals for your dirt and grime, and you can put just plaster them everywhere. Because what will happen is it's a lot cheaper. And the thing is, you'll be using tileable materials on a very quick and non-destructive or non-destructive workflow for your scene but it allows you to quickly add those details without having to like manually paint every single asset and painter and re import the textures just yeah like this is great this is definitely the benchmark of um the kind of work that studios would like to see i'd say this is i don't consider this junior i consider this at least a mid kind of level um quality bar And if you want to be really cheeky about it, you could like, um, you know, if this guy was like not super close to the camera, you could probably just use a plane and just like bake this down with an alpha on top. So it's like even less rice, you know, so versus like 1,000 or yeah, that, that's one size, what, 15,952 triangles? Damn. Yeah, I'd say the only feedback I'd have so far is just really crunching down on your trice. If that's, I mean, if you have a camera that is 13,952 triangles, you could probably create this camera asset around like two to three K, two to 3,000 triangles. So, I mean, I hope that's a, because it doesn't look it's like it's 13,000 triangles, but yeah, just something to keep in mind. And then say some feedback in this asset would be like, like this, see this section here? You have a lot of these edge loops in the center point. It's not actually affecting the silhouette or anything. So you could go in and just literally weld the center point and just, you know, so you have one edge loop down the center if it's connected to this part. If it's connected to the centric part, then I'd probably weld it up here so you don't get any weird shading and then just continue it. Just a lot of those little things will really bring down the, um, the trice count. And the same here as well, like probably like in the center, you know, I can see that. Yeah, so, okay. So, I mean, like your quality bar is really good and your texture work is really good, but I'm starting to see now where maybe there could be room for improvement. So for this guy here, unless these buttons are going to be, the camera's going to be super close or they're going to be touched and they actually move down, I would just keep this as a flat and just bake all that detail onto your norm map. Um, I'd remove these edge loops. Uh, yes, that's correct. 
Um, I've removed these edge loops in the center, and unless you're like mirroring the screen, I just get rid of the center one as well. Like, if it doesn't affect the silhouette, Roy, and it doesn't give you a purpose to mirror UVs, just just get rid of the edge loops because honestly, it, it only adds to the trice count. And um, yeah, it, it just for games especially, like you'll never get close enough to an object where the buttons have to be like just geometry in themselves. And the thing is with this too, Roy, if this is like all, you know, if you've UV this guy and all these are like their own UV islands, that's going to kind of call add up when it comes to like the texture resolution of the laptop. But if you just bake all this down as one flat surface, that saves you a lot of space instead. You know, and here as well, I'd probably just get rid of these center ones. And then like this section here, you know, you could probably like, you wouldn't even have to like this top part, unless you actually want it as geometry, you could probably just bake it down flat onto the actual top of the controller or the remote. Um, at the very least, you could like remove all the center point edge loops on this top section and just keep it one so you kind of have that nice kind of curvature hopping thing, but you're not paying so much for it. And then for like this part here, I can see that you've like, you basically have this, this is probably like a 34 edge cylinder, and then you've like welded the edges kind of around it. I wouldn't do something, like I wouldn't do that for such a small object. Um, what I would probably do if this was me, I would probably just give this, because I know that if you were to, see the hard part about this is, if you were to add jump, like a cylindrical geometry on top of this, and you were to bring that down to like 16 or 18 sides, it's going to appear fascinating. Like you're going to see that happening. So what I would probably do is just bake this down and then maybe just add a bit of geometry on top of this middle guy to so see you have that kind of geometry change happening on Mitch. You know, I think these buttons are fine. Like I think they're okay. It's Because I think if you got rid of those, then it would just be too flat. Like it, it, it just wouldn't look as nice. You know, but I'd probably wherever you can kind of cut on, cut down on these guys, I probably would. You know, so oh, awesome! So I can do this. Cool. Okay, so for example, if this was me, what I would do is these three edge loops in the center. I would just cut these out. If there's additional edge loops here, I would just weld these so it's a single one instead of multiple. I'd probably just this bottom part or like this button piece here and probably just bake down onto the top of it. Um, like these are fine as they are, but one thing you could do if you're making these geometry, just so they kind of pop a bit more on the mesh, is just sort of like slope the sides of these cylinder sections a bit more. So you're getting kind of just when the light hits it, it just looks a lot nicer. Um, yeah, that's probably what I would do. And then like this part here, I'd probably just follow the same, you know, for example, this guy here, unless it's like super visible from the side and you can see bending on this, I would just cut out all these little middle edge loops, you know, have one here in the center if this is like kind of going like that. Um, but no need for this guy or this guy. And just the same here. So I feel like the, the geometry, like your topology can be optimized a bit more because a remote should definitely not cost that much in triangles. And again, for this guy here, you have these fan things. Unless these are turning or animating, this could just be a flat texture. Your materials are awesome. Like your material work is really good. You know, I, I, I wonder if you do high poly custom bakes for this stuff, I assume you do. So, I mean, that stuff looks solid, but I think just your topology just needs to be crunched just a wee bit more just to get it within game engine reason. Yeah, this is great. It's like everything's there, like your lighting, your material work, your just the storytelling is just really good. But again, if studios want to see those wireframes and stuff, that will be the week. The weak point. I think one thing I would like to see in this stuff is just some of your UV breakdowns so I can kind of see what way you lay them out. So this guy here I can see that sci-fi gun. What I probably would do is because to me it just looks very flat on the edges and I wonder is it just a low poly model that you've UV'd and textured 
I'd probably for this stuff at least either do like the mid poly workflow where you're kind of chamfering all these edges and just like I don't know using tileables with like maybe uh you know all these are maybe tileables with a uh, mid poly workflow and then like the the text and all these details are on like a atlas sheet that you're just kind of unwrapping to plans in front of the mesh. So then like te technically this guy basically is just using tileables on that. I mean, that, that's an option if you really want to kind of quickly pump out work. Yeah, so you can see that the edges are very much um, just flat. If this, if you wanted to make this as a unique asset, I would definitely take the approach of doing this as a high poly, you know, softening those edges up so you get a really nice normal map bake and just giving it some real nice texture pass, you know. Um, I think in terms of texture quality, what I probably would do is, what I probably would like to see is kind of just more like discoloration on the yellow, just maybe like some fade, maybe smudge, roughness smudge on the grays, maybe around where the guy grips it and grips the gun. Um, you know, I'm, one thing I always kind of harp on is like adding some like details, like dust or kind of dirt details between objects on a mesh. So it kind of helps to mar it together. So it doesn't, you don't ever feel like things are kind of just like floating in front of something else. But I mean, overall, your portfolio is definitely on the right path. This was my first time baking from high poly bake into low poly, but the edges I think were bubble too small. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I've noticed that sometimes where people, like, I know people are like, well, if it's realistic, it has to have the sharp edges. But the problem is when that comes to game stuff, it, it doesn't really kind of translate very well because the further you get from that object on a technical level, it's going to start ailsing on screen. But second of all, it just doesn't look as good as if you really soften those edges up and get that bake in. Like yes, it's not one to one with reality, but it just it it just looks much nicer. And honestly, not to worry about. I mean, like your stuff is solid. Like it's really on the right track, you know. And you can see the time and attention and quality that goes into this. I mean, like even this is like freaking awesome. Like all this detail, like it just you can see your your modeling skills through this. You know, you can see kind of this guy here. You've really good high poly modeling, attention to detail. So I feel like you're not far off. I feel like if you just kind of just with a bit more care in the topology and a bit more care in your bakes, I think your stuff will be solid. Honestly, like you're very very close, and um, I wouldn't be surprised if you. I'd be surprised if you're not getting interviews with this portfolio because it is just it's it's awesome. It's so good. And yeah, anytime like anytime you ever need any advice or anything, Rory, hit me up over Discord and let me know. Um I'm always available. Cool. Okay, so next it's Mikel Roca in Milan. Sweet. Mecha Puma. Oh wow, this is very cool. Practice who New hard surface techniques and test how much detail I could use displacement mapping with sums and finger, coupling off walls, when you're inside very close to the head. Awesome. I'm I'm glad I'm glad this helps, Roy. And yeah, again, your portfolio is solid. Like I'm I'm very excited to see what you do next. And again, if you need anything, just hit me on Discord. Okay. So yeah, this is wonderful, Michelle. Like this is really nice. And the fact that you have it's very organic but it's also you can see a lot of the hard surface art coming through on the geometry and topology which is so nice i'd probably for me the only critique is if you were doing this mesh i'd probably just avoid all this like micro detail like the shine and all that because i feel like it really takes away from it you know if you had it just without it it looks so much better um maybe try and just avoid some of this kind of background stuff you know maybe you could have this in such a way where it's not using like a photoshop background but maybe it isn't an actual scene where it actually has like vegetation around it you know even like a marmoset scene i just feel it would look so much better because i just feel all this just it just takes away from the quality and it just makes it look very just hampered if that makes sense um yeah Otherwise, it looks, it looks great. I love it. It's like I love all like, the scratches and the 
you know the gloss and the gold pieces and just like I think what's really would be really cool is because it's very much metal on metal on metal or maybe you could add more organic elements to it so maybe you could add like for like this no section could be wood you know maybe the eyelid section could be wood you know you have some of the metal coming through you have the copper or brass and the gold you know maybe the section down here could be like a plastic or like a rubber instead of it being metal so just kind of it helps to kind of um push the mesh out a bit more and just a bit more kind of differentiation on the details which i think would look really cool but yeah that's the only feedback i have on this guy is just like adding more details to just like the materials kind of give more material definition change you know i would get rid of this kind of like photoshop background and do like a proper marmoset scene and just sort of like you know add like some even if it's just mega scans you know just pump out some of that stuff around it if you want the vegetation um because again the, the mesh itself is really good but two things three things i would like to see is because i feel like this is like the high poly if i'm not mistaken and um, if this is a low poly mesh seeing the wireframe the uvs and maybe just like a textured version of it on its own from like substance painter like a screenshot whatever like that would look really cool or maybe kind of like a you know you have like the albedo the roughness the metal the normal even world space normal you know so you can kind of see like okay this is how the bits like this is how each of these like channels look you know and then maybe you have like the wireframe section of it and then you have like just a trice count because i mean like the practice is really good it looks really solid but just a lot of that stuff will really help to kind of like you know let people know and understand and um, just where you're at in terms of being able to create that content Okay, so I'm curious, was this, was this, all right, AED Milano, it's just funny how you have this guy and then Roy has the other car, I just, I thought that maybe that was like an assignment or something you guys had, but this is cool. Um, yeah, so it's very much a sub-D model. Oh wow, Art Station, or not Art Station, 3D World Magazine, that's awesome. Um, yeah, congrats. That's really, really good, Rick. I'm glad that you got featured in that. I mean, it's definitely, it looks great. It's just, I'd say the only thing I query is just kind of what it's meant to be for. You know, it just, I think it's important to show if it is game studios you want to work with, just to show that you can create, um, you know, like you can create content that's optimized, but still has this quality to it. And the fact that you can actually model like to this detail and texture to it, it's kind of, you're already half the way there. You know, if you really just kind of crunch down on like this topology and, you know, just kind of optimize it so it's the silhouette isn't affected, but it's more optimized for games and you just let the normal map do a lot of the curvature details and stuff. Like it, it looks so good. But yeah, this is solid. Um, not much I would change, maybe just a bit more roughness variation, you know, around the crevices and edges where, you know, you can see you kind of have it here, but I feel like maybe the, the metal section overall is very glossy and maybe if you could just bring in just some subtle differences and change to kind of just pop the material out a wee bit more, it would look really cool. You know, maybe like this back panel, you could like add some discoloration to it so it's not like completely red maybe there's a slight kind of white tint to it a little bit or like just a desaturated red you know maybe around the handles maybe around the inside where the handles meet the door but yeah that's solid okay so today's stream has basically been a 45 minute stream um honestly the work i've seen today is awesome like you guys are really killing it and so so again you know what we covered in today's stream just making sure that you're topology and geometry for games is well optimized um that your materials read well you know if you've got a huge scene just make sure you utilize mid poly with tile balls and plaster those decals like that's a complete alternative workaround instead of having to like paint all those details in maybe you can set up shaders in unreal that basically utilize masks or such for, to get that detail in just another tip um you know for the tiger guy i would just take out the kind of fake background make it real um show wireframes you know show the texture layouts show your trice count and again roy for the 
remote and stuff, I'd probably shoot for like just making sure that you really kind of crunch down on that topology and get it in game ready format where maybe you know remote is like 750 tries or less. You could probably do it like 400 tries if I'm honest. Or maybe 1200 I said it's the most. You know, and just let your normal map do a lot of the work. Because you have to remember when it comes to anything like this, you can always pull back on your geometry and you can always LOD a mesh. But if your textures are high res, they're harder to pull back on because every time you pull back on them, you're paying an additional draw call to pull in a lower resolution texture. So, you know, I always say, like, your textures can do a lot of it for you. If you have a simplistic mesh, your textures can do a lot of work on that. Um, and one thing I would say is if you can mirror, so for example, on your Roy with your remote, you know, maybe those two remotes, instead of each of them being in maybe a single texture set, they could share the same texture set because you're just mirroring where you can. So maybe the left side of each remote can just be a single UV island. Let's mirror to the right without there being like two different UV islands for each, and maybe the base, the back, um, just to, anything that allows you to cut corners to include as much as you can into a single texture set. Because the, the more that you can do that, the less the engine has to draw on memory and texture usage. And you just basically have more performing assets. And I think when you're applying for, you know, even like junior or intern roles at studios, having this knowledge alone, never mind quality, but just having that knowledge will push you and propel you in that kind of application list further than other people. You know, you can teach someone to texture a lot better, you can teach them to model a lot better but it's harder and it takes more time to teach them the fundamentals of optimization and have that technical knowledge. And I feel it's just a lot of thing. It's one thing I feel that schools these days really lack in teaching is kind of just teaching people how important it is to really optimize. And what else, what else do I have for a girl? Um, yeah, just keep at it. Keep pushing it. You know, your your passion basically shines through in all this stuff, and you can see how committed and how how much you love your craft, and that kind of translates through to employers as well. But yeah, thanks so much for tuning in for today's rookies live stream. And again, if you guys have any questions, just hit me up on the Discord channel. I'm always available, and always there. And yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your Friday and have a wonderful weekend ahead. All right, see you.